And Elisa Torres had already awarded Pope to XRP. Ripple was granted Pope by the same judge at the same period. By awarding Ripple Pope, this decision signifies a big step forward for the cryptocurrency industry as part of its overall progression in its conflict with the Securities and Exchange Commission of the United States of America, Ripple achieved a certain degree of success as a consequence of this conclusion. Harry's arrived at the opinion that Ripple had broken federal securities rules when it sold XRP to institutions after doing a study on the matter. On the other hand, the corporation did not break the law when it let normal customers purchase XRP via exchanges. That the significance of this profile is considered to be among the highest among those that are presently accessible. In 2013, while seated on a bench, because Congress had not taken any action to establish a haven for token issuers and trading platforms or to establish so-called Bright Lines guidance, uh, the cryptocurrency industry and the securities and the Exchange Commission was unable to agree with the precise manner in which federal securities regulations should be applied to digital assets. This is because Congress has not taken any action to establish Bright Lines guidance. The American legal system is the one that is currently responsible for deciding the legitimacy of the explanation that was provided by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Additionally, the American legal system is the one that is responsible for determining whether or not the claims that were made by companies that the laws in their current form are unnecessary and out of date are valid. Academics can't provide a solution to this problem on their own. In the United States of America, for instance, if an asset is classified as a security, then the issuance of that asset is subject to severe regulation on disclosure and registration. This is the case because an asset is considered a security. On the other hand, businesses that deal in cryptocurrencies believe that the fact that digital asset tokens are decentralized and disintermediated makes it difficult for issuers to comply with these criteria. Several, they say this because it makes it more difficult for issuers to comply with the standards. In a similar spirit, trading platforms that provide these assets are subject to a tight regulatory framework, which is akin to the one that controls their conventional financial counterparts. This framework may be compared to the one that regulates traditional financial assets. If, on the other hand, the asset issue is not recognized to be a security, then the situation is far less problematic for these organizations. In the District Court for the Southern District of New York, which is now considering several cases connected to cryptocurrencies, including claims that were made by the Securities and Exchange Commission, this issue is considerably more important than it already was. As a result of the ruling that was issued by Judge Torres, Ripple was allowed to successfully sell XRP to retail investors. It is quite likely that the company will continue to offer XRP to retail investors via blind bid hack sales on exchanges in the future. The standard that the industry will be able to return to regularly may be established as a result of this verdict, which is a possibility. At the time that they made automated purchases, they were not aware of whether their payments were transmitted to Ripple or another seller of XRP. In his verdict, the court took this into account and said that the majority of those who acquired XRP via digital asset exchanges did not invest any of their money in Ripple. This was one of the factors that the court took into consideration. Even though several institutions had acquired XRP directly from Ripple via contracts, in terms of economic reality, program clients were not any different from buyers on the secondary market in the sense that they were uninformed of who or what they were paying for with their money while they were on the secondary market. Even though the decision ultimately turned out to be beneficial for exchanges, it caused shockwaves to ripple across the industry and sparked queries over the kind of precedent it created. An attorney named Grant Gleason, who represents clients in the Bitcoin industry, has said that uh, the decision is now being made in a single courtroom. The Securities and Exchange Commission is going to submit an appeal against the decision that was made, and it seems that this will be done to speed up the appeal process. The SEC wants to do this when the problem is eventually resolved. There is a possibility that the subject of whether or not the verdict will be beneficial to Bitcoin businesses and initiatives may be contested. Ripple executives Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson were the targets of complaints that were lodged against them. However, the regulatory body has already decided to retract those claims. If the verdict is maintained by the Court of Appeals, it may provide chances for programs that are seeking potential sources of funding. The decision that Judge Torres made in the litigation that the Supreme Court of the United States initiated against Terraform Labs may be an exception to the summary judgment order that he issued. Uh, this is according to the explanation that Glove provided to the reporters. Judge Jed Rykoff, who was also a member of the same court, thought that the reading that 
Judge Torres offered was incorrect. Both the Ripple rule and this specific case include unique conditions. Hence, it is probable that the Court of Appeals will not provide a verdict for a considerable amount of time. It is vital to notice that both of these cases involve distinct situations where Securities and Exchange Commission will not be able to launch an appeal until the issue has been settled. This is because Jarius has scheduled further procedures that will continue until April 2024. Since Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse made a passing reference to the possibility of a confrontation, there has been a great deal of speculation regarding the possibility of a settlement or a significant resolution to the ongoing legal battle that continues to exist between Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, this battle has been going on for quite some time. The experts in the area of cryptocurrency legislation weighed in on the topic almost immediately after this tweet went viral and became widely shared. Credits about the whole incident. Uh, one of these specialists, Bill Morgan, referred to it as nonsense after a meeting to resolve has taken place. He claims that the conflict that was taking place in the courtroom has been resolved. In his opinion, a settlement is not the same as a dramatic confrontation since it requires compromise and agreement on some aspects of the situation. He makes the case that this is something that should be kept in mind. As of this very time, Morgan does not have any reason to expect that a settlement will soon take place. It uh, has been brought to his notice that disagreements are often resolved via the process of reaching a settlement, which generally includes the chance to appeal, which may be a subject of great importance. It is feasible that the real repercussions of a settlement will be more substantial than what is being debated at this very moment. Likely, the amount of money that is now housed in that infrastructure may be affected by Ripple's XRP sales after December 2020 and any later sales that may occur. Since the cryptocurrency market is still in its infancy, the actual liquidity that is required for cryptocurrency trading has not yet entered the market. This is because the industry is still in its infancy. As one of the issues that we are facing, we are aiming to provide our customers who use our payment services with a terrific customer experience, while at the same time providing them with a solution that is both incredibly reliable and very cost-effective for making international payments. For the purpose of overcoming this impediment, we have been compelled to create our liquidity trading platform. Services about compliance, integrations, and the development of strategic relationships as a consequence of this. We have been compelled to acquire a complete grasp of the field of liquidity management. Sadly, many people in the sector have not taken the time to accomplish these things correctly. Nevertheless, once you have them, you will be able to look at them and say, hey, today we can solve a cross-border payment for a remittance company. A new company that intends to offer luxury things may accept stable coins or supply non-fungible tokens to enable its customers to bridge the gap between the fiat system and the digital asset system. This would make it possible for customers to acquire products that are considered to be lavish. Within the context of this scenario, the corporation will be required to meet equivalent standards to manage liquidity and get access to the Bitcoin liquidity that is now available. I have a lot of pride in the fact that I've been given the obligation of assuming complete responsibility for the upkeep of our payment infrastructure, as well as the responsibility of improving our payment infrastructure. On this infrastructure, which serves as the foundation, is the basis upon which all of the other components and commercial use cases are constructed. You must be aware that the information that has been provided is not meant to be trading advice. Rather, it is only a strategy for the project that we are presently working on. Even though we are still in the initial stages of the procedure, there are a great many different components. Uh, while working through the present use case, you can come to the insight that the upcoming use case will also need some of these attributes. Before making any decisions on investments, it is highly recommended that you do your study and seek the guidance of an authorized expert before making any decisions. Based on the information that is provided on this website, we do not take any responsibility for any investments that may be made.